Today I'm going to be breaking down the HSL panel, also known as the color mixer in Adobe Lightroom. If you're new here, I'm Hannah. I'm a photographer and video creator, and this series is really dedicated to making you become a better photo editor and just dedicated to understanding Lightroom to its fullest potential so that you can get the most out of this photo editing tool as humanly possible. So if you haven't caught the other episodes in the series, I highly recommend you check those out. I'll link them here and in the description below. But Let's get to it. So what is this HSL panel? Honestly, it's one of the easiest tools I think in Adobe to use and understand. So HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. So hue is the shade of the color. Saturation is how intense that color is. And luminance is the brightness of that color. And the HSL panel or color mixer allows you to manipulate individual colors rather than the overall look and feel. So when you're adjusting say blue, you're only adjusting the blues in the photo. And it's pretty easy to use. You just use the slider tool in the HSL panel to manipulate those individual colors. So the first way that hue can be adjusted is to most accurately represent what you saw in a given moment. So every camera comes with a color science and basically that color science is assigned by the manufacturer and it tells the camera how to perceive color. I'm not going to get into it too deeply because color science is a whole other topic, but that's kind of like the over arching understanding of what color science is. It's definitely way more technical than that, but for the purpose of this video, that's all you need to know. So say you're photographing the desert or a sunset where you have lots of orange tones. So basically this hue slider is going to allow you to adjust those orange tones. So they come out of camera and you think they're looking a little bit more on the red side, then you can go ahead and use the HSL panel and specifically the hue tool to adjust those red oranges <laughs> and get them to look a little bit more orange or whatever desired hue that you're after. You can also use it to create color combinations. So when we're talking color theory, the basic idea of color theory is specific colors pair well with other specific colors. So basically when we're talking color theory, using the hue sliders allows you to create your own color combinations according to color theory that best fit the look and feel you're going for within your image. Let's jump into Lightroom and start editing the photo from the last episode in the series. So here I have the HSL panel expanded to all. Now you can look at them individually as hue, saturation, and luminance, but I just find it helps with my workflow to have it expanded to all. So here's the photo and what I'm thinking here is I'd like those deeper colors within this area. So the reds, oranges, and yellows to skew a little bit more orangey yellowy. So as I slide the slider all the way to the right, it's not really affecting it much. So let's try the orange slider. That's really affecting it. So. This is great when you don't necessarily know precisely where the color is going to fall within the hue spectrum as it is in the color mixer. Like I just didn't know if that was going to pull more red or if it was going to pull more orange and it's very clearly pulling more orange. So that tells me I need to use the orange slider to affect those colors best. So. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little more on the orangey side. Let's see what those yellows do. So those yellows, it's very faint, but I am going to bump that up a little bit and then I'll just edit my blues. And I think that's really it for HSL adjustments within this photo. All right. I'm liking where this is at. So we will jump into saturation. Now remember saturation controls how intense a color is within your photo. One way that you can use the saturation slider is to create your own color palette. And what I mean by this is either making it a very vibrant color palette or making it a more pastel color palette by increasing or decreasing the saturation of a given hue. 
You can also desaturate or saturate a given color based on where you want your viewer's eye to go. So if you have something in the foreground but it's a little distracting and you would rather your viewer's eye go out further into the distance, then you would desaturate those colors that are in the foreground to further drag your viewer's eye to the subject that you intended. And sometimes in camera, photos can come out a little less saturated and I know this is very specific for I'm thinking sunsets and sunrises. The images come out way less saturated than what you saw with your eye. So this tool is great for boosting that saturation or giving it a more lifelike look closer to what you saw in person when you were actually taking the photo. So as we hop into Lightroom, here is the saturation sliders. So this photo is really skewing blue and orange. Those are the two most prominent colors. And I'm gonna desaturate my blues and my aquas just a little bit. I kind of like that muted look of the blues. And then I'm gonna play with this orange slider for saturation. And you can see as I bring it all the way to the right, Orange is a very prominent color and you don't really realize it until you bump that saturation slider up. So you're getting hits of it on the mountain here and even a little bit into the clouds. So that's something to be careful of um, is that color shift in other parts of the photo. So I'm gonna just bump that up a little bit. Let's see what it looks like desaturated. And I'll probably leave it right about there and let's see what these yellows do so these yellows are really really subtle and I'm just gonna bump that up a bit and I'm liking where that's at and the final slider in the color mixer I'm gonna touch on is luminance and as a reminder luminance controls the brightness of a hue or color and this is really helpful when we're talking contrast too because by increasing and decreasing the luminance of a color you're innately creating contrast or taking away contrast all right back in Lightroom I'll slide down to the luminance sliders and again it's very heavy on the orange and on the blues so those are the sliders I will play with the most so just for reference blue all the way to the left is going to really deepen the blue hue in the photo and all the way to the right it's really gonna blow out and brighten those blues so I'll go ahead and just pop that up a little bit, make those blues a little on the brighter side, and I will go ahead and brighten those oranges as well. For this image specifically, I find that I want the viewer's eye to go to the mountains. So I'm sandwiching them between really bright blues and really dark oranges. And so by doing that, the viewer's eye is innately going to go to the contrasty part of the image, which are the mountains. And one last thing to look out for when we're talking luminance is creating color banding or fringing. So color banding quite literally is what it says. <laughs> it's like creating color bands, so lines of a color in a photo. And this often happens when we're trying to adjust blues in the sky. That's where I see it most commonly. And when you're trying to bring back the luminance of the shade blue in your photo and you bring the luminance slider to the left trying to darken that, that can often lead to banding. That's why it's always best to get it as close to real life in camera as possible. And another thing it can do is color fringing. And this creates outlines on colors within your photos and I see this happen when I'm adjusting greens and sometimes this is kind of inevitable but it creates an outline on the shade of green in my photo so if I'm photographing let's say like a tree and I want to darken those greens a bit you just have to ride a really fine line when using the luminance slider so Exercise caution when you're using the luminance tool within this HSL panel because I found through um, seven plus years of editing within Adobe Lightroom that the luminance slider is really where you're going to get the most obvious visual cues that edits were made. I just want to touch on one final tool within the HSL or color mixer and that is the selector tool. So jumping back into Lightroom, if you see this little circle here, I go ahead and and click that circle. So if I bring that on screen, you can see that I no longer have a mouse, I have this selector tool. So I am in the blues. So if I hold down on my mouse and I drag up, you can watch those blue sliders and the aqua sliders start to change and it's also changing the shade of blue in the photo. 
So this is just another way that you can edit or manipulate within the HSL sliders. So if you're somebody that wants to use the selector tool rather than the slider tool, you have the option too. And as one final look at the edits we made today in the color mixer, I'll toggle this on and off. So this is with our edits. And if I hit this eye tool, this is without. So you can really see I made a lot of adjustments, even though they were really small adjustments to the blues of the image. It's a really prominent color within this photo, and I really wanted to brighten that sky up rather than have it so dark as it was when I shot it in camera. I was really hoping to keep these edits as close to real life as possible. I think I've said that a million times before if you've watched any of these other editing videos I've done, but that's really my approach for almost every photo is getting them as close to real life as possible while also adding my own creative or artistic style. So I encourage you to start experimenting with all these sliders if you haven't already and really get a feel for what they do, how they manipulate your photos, and also create your own creative style or artistic approach to editing. There you have it. That is the color mixer or HSL panel in Adobe Lightroom. You now know how to manipulate hue saturation and luminance and you know what all of those terms mean to allow you to edit your photo to its fullest potential and bring your creative vision to life. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this editing series. I will link them up here and in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.